Physician, heal thyself is a powerful statement. There is more to those words than a passing thought. Hi, I'm Stephanie Anderson, and welcome to The Main Health Show. alludes to the readiness and ability of physicians to heal sickness in others while sometimes not being able to heal themselves. While my next guest is not a medical physician, she is very skilled in her profession and her recent announcement on social media has empowered to embrace her personal struggle while assisting her clients. My guest, Rachetta Thompson, also known as Wigiana, is the owner of the Mobile Boutique, a concierge mobile beauty service, and the Hair Rich Club, a luxury online company. The Mobile Boutique and Hair Rich Club combine together to provide a luxury beauty services for women who suffer from hair loss. She helps women who have experienced hair loss due to medical illnesses like alopecia, Ray has been in the industry for 20 plus years, servicing women from all over and restoring their confidence. Her specialties include non-surgical hair replacement, medical grade cranial prostheses, and custom made hair pieces. Welcome Ray Shetta to the Main Health Show. Now Ray Shetta, first of all, thank you for joining me today on the Main Health Show. You and I go a long way back. And I know you well, and I'm so proud and happy to witness your growth on your journey. We're both in Texas now, and I have a few questions for you. Please share with the audience a little bit about your business, the Hair Rich Club, and your journey to the Lone Star State. Hey, well, my name is Rayshetta Thompson. I also go by Wigiana. Uh, I am the owner of the Hair Rich Club in the Mobile Boutique, which is a mobile concierge beauty service. Uh, Hair Rich Club, it was established in 2016. And actually, when I came up with the name for the Hair Rich Club, I thought about Hair Replacement Center, mm-hmm. uh, which are the abbreviations for Hair Rich Club. I wanted to create a environment for people where they could come that was private, uh, that we could offer great service, but for people who suffer from hair loss. So originally the Hair Rich Club started out as a salon. And as I started moving forward, I was like, it's really a need for a hair loss specialist in in our field, um, especially in the African-American realm of the beauty industry. And because I suffered from hair loss, it just kind of made that connection. So I was like, you know what? Hair Rich Club was never supposed to be just a salon-based business. It was supposed to be clinic, clinical, to be able to help people. Um, So I started it back when I was in Dayton. Um, We got really good results from, you know, people who were gravitating to us. A lot of it was because we were African-American because they could relate, you know, having someone who looks like them to be able to service them and um, be educated and skilled on their needs. So that's kind of how it came about. Um, And actually it switched from being just clinic based to kind of going online. So now the Hair Rich Club is an online luxury wig company. And we provide wigs for people who suffer from hair loss for different reasons of alopecia, cancer, lupus, and different medical issues. That's great. And that's awesome because there is something to say about representation. We're going to talk about that a little later, but I do realize that we know that hair loss is reaching epidemic levels and not just one demographic of persons who suffer from it. And it 
should also be mentioned that some people are searching for people who look just like them and that can relate to them. So that's very good that you identify that and felt the need to fill that part in for people. But I have a question. Now, I know your name is Rachetta and I call you Ray, but also you mentioned Wigiana. Now you're gonna have to tell me how that name originated. Now, am I saying it right? I was like, is it Wigiona? Is it Wigiana? Kind of share with me a little bit about how that came about. Well, we can always take lemons and make lemonade. Let's say that. Okay. So Wigiana actually was a name that uh, somebody gave me um, in like this Facebook beef that I had um, from a past relationship, a young lady, she it was a it was a really big mess, actually. Um, she tried to slander my business name. And because I was making wigs, she made a joke of it. And she was like, oh, she makes these wigs. Ha, 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 Wigiana. And I was like, that's cute. You know, I thought it was really cute. And I was like, you know what? You know, I was kind of embarrassed at first because, you know, like I said, everybody I believe you even reached out to me because I put something up and you was like we don't do that you know and I just was like okay get yourself together and I was like okay well how can I turn this and literally I like the name and I was like you know what I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna be Wigiana so I got the name trademark if it is my name and um I'm the first because there is another young lady who is calling herself that now, but I'm the first spelled the way that it's spelled and I am Wigiana. So I just took lemons and made lemonade out of it and kept it moving, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. I didn't know that story, but knowing me, because I do follow you. Yeah, you reached out to me and you yeah. were like, no, we don't I do didn't that. know the whole backstory, but what I do know is that what the enemy means for evil, God turns it around for your good. And I'm so glad that your personality is such that you decided to take what was intended as an insult, that you are now making it work for you because actually that's your moniker now. Now people know you as Wigiana and it's working. So I love that you took the stones that were thrown at you and you put them on the ground and you started building stepping stones to elevate yourself. So at the time I wasn't aware of the whole backstory. So that's good. And I am so proud of you. Thank you. Um, Ray, as I see you and your background, you have your girls in the background displayed, but I cannot help but notice your regalness. I always see you looking so beautiful always smiling, and I can't help but notice that often I see you with your hair, and now I'm seeing you without hair. Now, honestly, I'm loving that headpiece that you're wearing, but please share because it's inspiring to hear that you recently announced your experience with hair loss with all of us on social media. Share a little bit about that backstory and how you came to kind of share that with people and what you're dealing with. Okay, I'm gonna try not to get emotional. And that's okay. I have virtual tissues for you. Um, because when I talk about it, I always say that I don't, I never really realized how connected I was or how much the hair loss really affected me. Um, because I was a hairstylist, I was always able to mask or cover or camouflage and um, I always let people know now that I talk about it openly that I suffer from hair loss since the age of 12. So I've always had alopecia. I, I had alopecia areata. That's when it started at like around the age of 12. And, um, just throughout the years of trying to cover and mask braiding and just all type of stuff, it just made it worse. Right. And, um, that's kind of how I started making wigs was because I wanted realistic looking hair. So I started making wigs. And just recently, um, I don't know, I went, I did a fast and I was talking to God and I was asking him, I said, I want to do something 
that's just out of this world, right? When I'm doing this fast. And it came to me and it was like, you need to be more transparent about your situation. Girl, I looked at the sky with so <laughs> Are you sure? I said, God, you ain't you ain't telling me to do that because I was ashamed. You know, I was very ashamed. I was embarrassed. Um, I used to, excuse me when I say this, but I was upset with God because of my hair situation. Um, and a lot of it was because I could do amazing hair, healthy hair. And it was like, well, why I can't get mine to grow? You know, what is it that I'm I'm not doing? And I really had a hard time, you know, accepting that this is not a curse. Because I used to say, I'm like, I'm cursed, you know? And then I started realizing it's not a curse. This is a gift. This is a gift that God gave me to be able to connect with my audience, connect with my clients. So when they come and they sit in my chair and they start doing what I'm doing now and they crying and I can say, it's going to be okay. You know, it's going to be okay. But it took me, like I said, since I was 12, I've been hiding it. Even my customers, they probably knew that I had an issue, but not really what to the extent, right? So um, recently when I did the fast and I was like, you know what? And he was like, you need to be more. I was like, yeah, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> he ain't talking to me. And it just kept coming back. And it was like, this is what you need to do. So I'm going to tell you first, I wasn't going to completely do it. First, I shaved the top off and I was going to give myself a hair replacement unit. And I did. And that still wasn't it. So um, when I took the piece off, now now like an old man, right? Now I don't have no hair at the top. I got hair on the sides. And I'm looking crazy. And I was just, I just stood there and I stood in the mirror. And I was like, who are you? You know, because I was feeling like I didn't, I'm like, who am I? You know, yeah, I know I'm Ray. I know I'm Wigiana. But I'm supposed to be a voice for other women who suffer from this. You know, I'm the face of this. Let me be me. And um, I cut it. I just, I just cut it off. And I was just like, this is what it's going to be, <laughs> you know? And um, it was crazy because when I did, and I was just like, this is so crazy. All this time I've been hiding and it was people who needed it. People was messaging me. People was on the post. They was like, I just did mine. And it's just like, and I was just like, man, like, and um, I always like to say, just because I don't expose myself doesn't mean that I'm insecure in who I am, but we all have insecurities, right? So it's okay. Like, even with some ladies, I, you know, the ladies I service and things, and they'll say, well, I'm not ready to do that. And I said, you don't have to. Just understanding, like, it's not, it's, this is not like a plague, you know, this is something that, um, men, women and men, you know, deal with. And I think it's not talked about so much for men because they can shave their hair, but you would be surprised how many men do not like having bald heads. So, um, yeah, when I did it, it's crazy. Cause I'm not gonna lie. I was the person when I used to see women with their hair shaved like this, I'd be like, ain't no way I'm doing that. Ain't no way it's not going to happen. And now even me and the guy that I date, he said, it's so crazy to see you living in this moment because he said, I remember us having a conversation because he told me before he was like, you should just cut it off. And I was like, never, you know, and he was like, you like literally chopped me at, at the legs when I said it. He was like, I was like, let me just leave that alone because that's clearly a touchy topic for her. He was like, and now look at you six months later, you, <laughs> you running around, you ain't wearing no hat. You... <laughs> <laughs> looking gorgeous but that's the thing I'm so glad that you were transparent and it allowed you to be open with your experience because a lot of times that's what people are missing and once you did it I remember exactly when I saw your post on social media and you just shared your truth and I responded because working in the hair loss industry we see women just struggling with it. And sometimes it's difficult when you're providing a service and the technical professional aspect of it 
and you can only empathize with your client. But I believe that your situation holds so much weight because you can come from a place of experience and they can actually see what you're dealing with. And you came into your truth and it's personal for everybody. And I thought it was so amusing when you said your boyfriend was like, when he said you chopped him off at the knees, but it had to come to a point in time where you were receptive. And even when the almighty himself told you, you questioned him like, as he instructed you that this is what you were going to do because it still took some time because it's very personal. You know, I wrote the book, Alopecia is a Thing, Breaking the BS, or the belief systems about the emotional struggles that impact people. On the outside, people see the visual aspect, but there are so many eternal emotions tied to it. And I wonder if the word that you want to assign to what you felt is empowering. Did it feel empowering to you to be able to do that? Yes, like even now, like like I said, I don't like fully just go out with my hair out, but like I wore a baseball hat out the other day. And like when you see me, you'll know like it's gone, right? And I was just like, this who I am, you know? And it's it's one of those things now. I think for me moving to Dallas, it really helped because I was in a comfort zone. I probably would have not felt like I could have did this if I was in Ohio because of everybody knowing who I am. And you know what I mean? But being here, I don't know nobody. You only know what I give you right now, right? So it's just like, this me, you know? The girl at my job said the other day, she said, oh, you cut your hair? I said, girl, this hair been cut. <laughs> You just didn't know because you don't know me. You only know what you see right now, you know, but yes, it was very empowering. I feel, and I still wear wigs. So my new thing is sometimes I feel like a wig. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Great. Trademark that before somebody else takes it. I was like, you know, and that's just, that's yeah. just how I feel. Sometimes you will see me with a wig on. Sometimes you won't, you know. There's the versatility, and they say women have the prerogative to change our minds. We can do whatever, whenever. <laughs> but I think that's something, and you said that if a woman's not ready to go out with her head uncovered, she shouldn't be made to feel obligated to do so. I think everybody should be made free to dance to the beat of their own drum. The stigma should be removed that people feel obligated to do one thing or the other, then feeling good about whatever they're doing that makes them feel good about themselves. For sure, there's been some shame put upon people taking off their wigs, and then there's been shame put upon people for keeping them on. So I think the divide, there has to be, it has to be abolished. And I'm trying to do my best to do that because of the stigma the biases and the everything that's negatively associated with alopecia because it's definitely there and it, i think it just like you it needs to be talked about more you know um i know with me opening up and you know sharing with people you know it's like because you hear these things that's kind of cruel people like oh yeah uh, i heard somebody say they should do away with wigs one time. And I was like, well, that's kind of cruel because everybody's not wearing wigs because it's a choice for some people there. They have no option, you know? So I'm, I'm, that's when I say, you know, to not like kind of focus in on what you consider a flaw for somebody, because it's not really a flaw. It's just, it's an insecurity that you may have and it's okay. Cause we all have it. You know, we all have insecurities and it could be very s small to somebody, you know, like when I shave, it's like, oh, you could have been shaved your hair. Mm -hmm. No, I couldn't because I needed to do that when it was time for me, you know? So, and and like I said, even if you don't want to ever shave your head, it's okay. But being comfortable with who you are is the biggest thing, you know? I know women who who never 
expose their hair, you know, but they accept the fact of the loss at the same time. Um, and then there's some where they be like, girl, I'll take this wig off flying down the highway, <laughs> you know? So it's a preference thing, but I, I, I definitely think that we should talk about it more. There are a lot more people who suffer from alopecia than not. Um, I don't know the statistics on it, but I know it's high, you know, um, because again, there are men who suffer from hair loss or alopecia and they don't like it, you know, but they don't talk about it because it's easy for them to just, they just shave their hair, but they don't really like it. People, people who truly love you will accept you, you know, because let's just say if you had a terminal illness or something and something happened you think you think your mate won't love you if your hair fell out? I doubt I doubt that very seriously, but it'd be a lot of it, 90% of it be us, you know, happen to get over that hurdle of, and I'll say this, I know for me, not wanting to open up had a lot to do with past experience of experiences of me just sharing or Maybe, maybe when I still had hair, but it was thinning and I let somebody see it and then they use it against me later. Like, oh, well, that's why you bald head or, you know, and it's like, well, dang, I was trying to be, be myself with you and now you using it against me. So it's like, if that happens, you know, once or twice or whatever in your mind, now you already shielded, you guarded and you're like, you know what? I'm not ever letting anybody get that close to me again where they can hurt me, you know? <laughs> I understand completely. And you have every right to protect yourself. I always say that a child that's been burnt, the first sign of smoke starts to retreat because they know how that is. But it all depends on that person and it sounds like the young man that you have now is a keeper because those other people were not your destiny. But what I wanted to share and say is what I do know about you is your integrity, your work ethic, and how much you care for people. So kind of tell me a little more. I know we talked about the Hair Rich Club. I found out the origin behind the name Wigiana. But tell me a little bit about what it is that you're doing with your mobile beauty business. I'm very impressed about how you fitted out your RV. It seemed like it was a long process. Kind of share with us what it is that you're doing now in the streets of Dallas and helping people. I am in these Dallas streets, baby. So the Mobile Boutique um, is an extension of Hair Rich Club. It, it is our service part of the business. So I actually service women um, by providing hair replacement services, non, non-surgical hair replacement services, cranial prosthesis, and custom-made wig units uh, for women who suffer from hair loss from different issues. I actually go to these customers. I go to their houses. I can literally pull up to anywhere, your house, your business, or wherever. And I either service them. I have a beauty bus. I'll service them on my beauty bus because the idea was to create privacy on a, a but luxury at the same time. So they get this one-on-one service with me um, and we do everything in there. Um I do their hair. I have a shampoo bowl in there and they they just get the works. I even give them a hand and arm massage. Like I really, I wanted to bring the integrity back to the beauty industry, but in my specialty. So it's it's been a it's been a huge journey. I've been meeting some amazing women and soon forward, probably within the next 30 days, because I got a couple of more pieces of things that I need to get together, will actually be accepting insurances. So people can actually get their cranial prosthesis through the Hair Rich Club, and they could possibly have their insurance pay for it as well. I love it. And for those viewers who may not know, please explain what a cranial prosthesis is. So a cranial prosthesis is the medical term for your wig unit. Cosmetically, we call it a wig unit, but in the medical realm, it's a cranial prosthesis. And they come made of different constructions, different laces, different type of poly um, material that you can use. Um, You can get get them to where it's just like topper units, 
Um, you can get the full unit. So it's just based upon um, each person's individual needs that you can get the actual cranial prosthesis for you. But that you got like plenty of options from textures to colors to different lace um, areas and things. So, I mean, like the possibilities are like totally endless. And just like you said, you can get these for men and women, also children as well, also children as well. Well, I foresee the same for you. I mean, honestly believe that the sky is the limit for you. In Hollywood, they'll talk about somebody being a triple threat. They can sing, they can dance, and they can act. But I believe in our industry, you are a multiple threat in a positive way. In the sense that you have come from a heart where you can relate to your clients, you can slay hair, construct wigs, and provide excellent customer service. So I foresee a lot of good things happening for you and your new endeavor in Dallas. And I was happy when you were a little bit closer to me in the Lone Star State because Ohio was a little distance away. But I'm so glad that you're here. I know there is going to be someone watching our show who is going to want to know more about you and the services that you're after. Can you share your contact information and how they may get a hold of you? So you can check me out um, on... My website is hairrichclub.com. I am Hair Rich Club on Facebook and I am HRC underscore mobile boutique on Instagram. I know my hashtags may seem like they're kind of everywhere, but I was, you know, I've been creating as we go, right? So I may go back and start changing some of these things. Uh, if you look me up on TikTok, I'm on there as I am Wigiana on TikTok. Rachetta Thompson, the owner of the Hair Rich Club and the Mobile Boutique, thanks for joining us today on the Main Health Show. And thanks everyone for watching. Until next time, be blessed. there. Have you heard of alopecia? If you haven't, you are missing out on critical knowledge about a condition affecting millions worldwide. Alopecia is a term used to describe hair loss, which has become a common problem amongst people of all ages and backgrounds. If you or someone you know is dealing with alopecia, then you need to hear this. I have written a book that will change your life titled, Alopecia, It's a Thing, Breaking Through the BS or the Belief Systems and How to Overcome the Emotional Struggles Associated with Hair Loss. Now, in this book, I reveal the little known truths about alopecia, including its causes and symptoms and the treatment options available. This book contains practical tips and advice that have helped many sufferers of alopecia reclaim themselves and their confidence. But that's not all. In Alopecia is a Thing, I share personal stories from people who have gone through the alopecia journey and how they beat the condition to take back their lives. Now these stories are a testament to the resilience and strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Whether you have been diagnosed with alopecia or know someone who has, this book is the perfect guide to help you navigate your way through the condition. Alopecia is a thing was written for everyone. You don't have to be a woman with hair loss to understand this book, but you must have an open mind too. If you're ready to take control of your life and regain your confidence, then Alopecia is a Thing is the perfect resource for you. Visit my website, alopeciaisathing.com, and let's journey towards an, if not hairier, but emotionally healthier future together.